Representative Howard is one of our newest members of the delegation and she has hit the ground running. Let me tell you, she is everywhere. And this happens to be in the heart of Representative Howard's district. So we're thrilled to have her here to bring greetings. Representative Howard. Yeah. Thank you, Sandra. Wow. wow. Good morning, everyone. It is so great. I have lived and worked here in the city of Lowell for over 30 years. So when you're out in the community, you hear everything and they share with you everything. A lot of learning. And, and I learned quite a bit. When you decide to run for office, was that always your end goal? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Woke up No, no. People pushed me for years. Yeah. Like at least a decade. I never considered running for office, yeah. you know? Before I was elected, I served on 12 different nonprofit boards. I didn't know how to say no because all these nonprofits, they're all important to me. I wish there's more than 24 hours a day that I could say yes to all. The first one that they invited me to serve on, they said, you would be the perfect person to serve on our board. Being a refugee, being a genocide survivor, being a woman, being a mother, you can be the voice. And my passion is really just to serve the community. Aww. Well, my love. Thank you so much. <laughs> really, my role is to be accessible and responsive. That is my job. That's what I was elected to do. Ready to go bye bye? Yeah. Come on. My work, what I do now, it's often 24-7, so I don't get I don't get a lot of this time. Okay, buddy. Come on. Bye, sweetie. Yesterday I received about 65 emails, so I'm trying to respond to all by the end of today. It's just not enough time in the day, most days and most weeks. See you guys later tonight? All right. Bye, sweetie. Love you. Yeah, have a good day. All right. Amanda will be here shortly. Bye. Be good. Bye. I'll see you. See you later? Yeah, you'll be good. Stay with your brother. Suck the bye to me. Yeah. Suck the bye. Lowell is unique because Lowell has the second largest Cambodian population in the United States. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah, um, my usual. And that would be all. Just from five to seven minutes from my house to my office, it takes at least a good 45 minutes to an hour uh, just talking to, uh, to constituents along the way. We're going to talk with the Chamber of Commerce and and just see, you know, what they think we, we could be doing. Excellent. Better. Excellent. Coming along good. Hey, Maite. Hi. How are you? When I was campaigning, the constituents asked to have a district office. They wanted to be able to have access and also engage with their representative. And so I made a pledge, and I kept my pledge that should I be so honored to be elected, that I would have a district office. The, uh, that's the unfortunate part. Thank you all for, for joining us today. We really appreciate you being here. My, my meetings are here. I didn't realize they were waiting outside. Sorry. I am so sorry. I didn't realize you were waiting oh, outside. Come on in. Come on in. I'm finishing up a phone call. Come on. I'm supposed to go with you. Yes, you go. Come on in. Come on. Yes. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> Thank you so much. See you later. Bye-bye. Come on in. Good to see you. Hi, Good Bob. morning. Hi, Jean. How are Hi, you? Good morning. I'm so sorry. How long you? Oh my gosh. Oh, I was on don't the... worry about a thing. Let her worry. 
<laughs> we can't do that to her. <laughs> Come on in. Okay. Okay, so yeah, you had a question a about the one. Songus Arena, the land, the they're looking to land, the, the park land. Yes. So I'm waiting to hear back from UMass Lowell. Yeah. And about that. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about behind the Songus Arena. Oh, yeah. The People think that UMass has plans for development and that they have rights to develop. Right now, it's just hearsay. Yeah, that's what I mean. Just that's hearsay. That's why I decided right? rather than go be talking about it on Facebook and expressing my outrage, I was going to ask. Ask you. I mean, we don't have much green space already, as you know, in downtown Lowell. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, oh, I think Jim Wilde is out. My other meeting is outside. Sorry. Let me go open the door. <coughs> Come on, Jim. Hello, I have I have my 915. If you don't mind waiting for I a little bit. It all. Oh, someone you know out there. Another downtown resident. How are you? Government Here. is there to help the people. That's really their job. Their job is there to make sure that their needs are met. One thing that uh, happened to us this year, which was really terrific, was... Uh, there have been constituents, urgent, urgent issue where they show up at my front door at 7 a.m., sometime 6 in the morning. Then they called, I need to meet with you. I'm like, okay, let me, um, you know, put on my clothes, let me run over. <laughs> well, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in the community. It takes a village. It takes a village. <laughs> she cleans the trash on the streets. She's, she does everything. She's a hero. Take care. Bye, Jim. Thank you so much. You're welcome. When I first moved to Lowell in 91, it was just me and my daughter who was just one years old. Hey, Who's hi, that? Susie Q. Who's that? How are you? Is oh my mama? goodness, hey. Is that my mama? Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't yeah. see you all day. Oh my goodness, I miss you. Oh. She has severe medical needs. She's very severely mentally and physically delayed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I worked at a law firm here in downtown Lowell for almost three years being a bilingual legal secretary, but didn't provide benefits, no insurance coverage. At this point, I am now a single mother. I needed health insurance for myself and for my daughter. My salary at the law firm was really, was, was not a lot, so I couldn't pay, I couldn't get health insurance coverage for myself and my daughter with my, uh, with my small, small salary. So I decided to demote myself to a receptionist, but I get the full health insurance coverage for me and my daughter. The first day I walk into Lowell Community Health Center, people look at my daughter, people stare at her, but not this doctor. She showed that she accepted my daughter for who she is. And so many years later, it was an easy decision for me to say yes to Lowell Community Health Center when they asked me to serve on their board. What occurred in Cambodia between 1975 and 1979 was an absolute universal tragedy. The Khmer Rouge instituted a draconian step of forcing hundreds of thousands of people to leave Phnom Penh, to go to the countryside, to work as slave laborers, where many of them were going to face death. The crimes during that period were some of the worst crimes of the 20th century, certainly after the Holocaust in World War II. At the age of about five years old, I didn't understand that. Where are we going? And I remember my mom and dad pushing my maternal grandparents on a little car. And me and my siblings were uh, walking behind with so many people just keep walking. Now we're surrounded by complete strangers, and I didn't ask much question to my mom and dad. I just realized we're no longer at our home, but now we're at a different home. My younger brother um, passed. Uh, shortly when we got to that village, he passed. And then my maternal grandmother uh, passed after. 
and then my maternal grandfather, and then my sister. My dad and I, we were in line waiting for food. And I remember two men on bicycles come over while we were in line and just grab him and took him away. And I remember walking back home by myself and my mom, as soon as she saw me walking back by myself, she knew right there and there and that he's not coming back. About two million Cambodians uh, were killed by the Khmer Rouge. So now I just, um, at that point now, it's just my mom and I. So two and a half years later, we got approved for resettlement to the United States. And, and we arrived in the United States as refugees. Are we moving somewhere else next? Where's next? Where to next? Every single day, where to next? From that where to next, we were never really um, comfortable at anywhere. So I've just been running for many years. I learned really everything I know about public service from Nikki. And I would not be here today had it not been for my good fortune to have been hired by her. Thank you always, Nikki. And thank you all for being here today. Today we're here for the bridge dedication to Nikki Songas. She was my boss for 12 years. And I learned so much from her. When I was first elected to Congress, we reached out to a good friend in the Cambodian community. We were looking for someone who could do constituent services. That is someone who deals with people who have unique problems with the federal government. And Vanna became highly recommended. And uh, we interviewed her, were very impressed, and hired her pretty much on the spot. And she has served the districts throughout my tenure in Congress. This is a community that is home to the second largest Cambodian population in the country. And it's been great to see as that community has grown and become ingrained in this city that candidates who are of, are of Cambodian origin can rise to the top and represent not only that particular community, but all of us. It is a bridge between the past and the future. And I thank you so much for honoring me with a bridge that is a testament to both where we've been and where we want to go. Thank you. Shop as always. Thank you. Nice to see you. So <laughs> don't you. What's going on? So far, I have not seen any nonprofits in the area. Yeah. In our community, doing anything on that. Oh, that's evening. great. Yes. Because it's going to be a great event. Yeah. Um, we really haven't had a big fundraiser for you, so far. We have a great team. I, I, there was no way I could have done it without you, without your help, and with your tremendous, tremendous advice council and you were there every step of the way. When the pandemic hit, who was the first person to pick up the phone and start delivering meals to folks who otherwise might not have lunches, for example, for school kids who weren't in school? It was Vanna. When trash became an issue months ago in the downtown, who was the first person to pick up a, a pail and go out and start picking up trash? It was her. I'll, I'll get this piece. You will? Okay. <laughs> it's the kind of person she is. It's the kind of person you want to get behind. The fact that she actually puts in sweat equity and, you know, gets dirty out here. I mean, we're out here in the, uh, in the summer and the, uh, in the heat and everything and picking up trash. So, I mean, I think, I think it's, it's inspiring for the other people in the neighborhood. That's why we've gotten an expanding group of people uh, helping out. Right before the pandemic, we were in Florida on vacation. People were texting me, calling me to say, have you seen the news? I'm like, what news? The incumbent, my predecessor, has been arrested for 28 federal charges. She spent the rest of our vacation on the phone and online with 
people who were just adamant that she has to step up. I've never considered myself running. I, people have been pushing me to run for office for at least a decade. It takes a lot of your time to run for public office. It doesn't matter what office you're running for. It takes time, commitment, uh, courage. But the community needed to be heard, need to be uh, you know, well represented. So I decided to go forward. She really didn't want to see this guy get reelected. She was certain that she could do a better job for this district. Whether she won or not, she was going to take the chance. When you indicated that you were going to run at the start of the pandemic against a multi-term entrenched incumbent who was very popular as, as a first-time campaign, it blew a lot of people's minds. She was going to run against probably the most popular politician in the area. The odds weren't with her. We always supported her and advised her that you're going to win. There's no question about it. But in my heart of hearts, I just felt the odds were against her. There were challenges during the campaign. I was at a voting location holding my sign, and some of my friends were right next to me holding signs. Across the street, a white man said to me, go back to your country, you don't belong here. Within a second, it just brought me back to 83. I was in high school, I was in a classroom, and a boy in the classroom, he said to me, go back to your country, out of the blue like that, just look at me and said, go back to your country. I didn't know what, how to respond at that moment, it just hit me hard, and I just started to cry. Um, I remember other students were laughing, thought it was funny. So when it happened to me in the classroom as a freshman in high school in 83, and here we are in 2020, we still have someone telling someone that you don't belong here. We received threatened messages. I was scared for my life, for my family's life and my volunteers. I considered dropping out. My team and my supporters said, you went through worse. You survived the genocide. You got this, you can do this. So I got that reassurance um, from the community and from my team to keep going with the race. I always felt that you didn't get involved in politics to be something. You got in politics to do something. And you've done a heck of a lot in just one term. When I found out that Vanna had won the election, first of all, I wasn't surprised uh, because I know how hard she worked, but I was absolutely thrilled that she'd been successful given that it was an especially challenging time to run with COVID so front and center in our daily lives. And it really interfered with sort of the normal ways of campaigning, but Vanna overcame that as she has so much in her life. I couldn't believe it. With how the race shaped up, I was still kind of surprised by how big she won. I didn't think she was going to win like that. She clobbered him. It blew my mind that she did so incredibly well. And now she's showing us why it was so important to get behind her. Because she's working 24 hours a day in support of her constituents. And, and people realize that. The work doesn't stop because the, the issues are so important. And so I hope to continue to make an impact in the community. Being a legislator is a learning process. You can't know everything, but you have to be ready for anything. You have to commit to mastering the material so that when you take a vote, you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. And you have to stay connected with the people you represent. And I have no doubt that Vanna will be successful on all those fronts. I don't like the word politician. I prefer to call myself a public servant. I am here to serve the public.